terminals don't usually go out of their way to surprise you. Maybe you need to disengage a lock or open a door. Maybe you need to read about the amount of cargo that's being shipped from a local business. But every once in a while, you will find an entry that gets you completely off guard. It's funny, but silly, and, uh, and definitely weird. Why would someone ever jot this down? Well, I think these literary gems should get the attention that they deserve. So today, I wanted to list five strange terminal entries in Fallout 4. Let's get into it. Starting off with number 5, we have Fred Allen's terminal in the basement of the Hotel Rexford. This is located in Good Neighbor. If you've already met Fred, you'll know that he's a chem dealer. And even though he does have the vocabulary of a middle schooler, he isn't totally dumb. He realizes to become a better merchant, he should personally try what he's offering. So he comes up with a brilliant idea to record his experiences while he's on a different chem. Should make for interesting results, right? So his first test is him taking Jet. Oh man, Jet, that's why they call it Jet. Man, well, I'm flying! Flying, baby! After that, he thought he should try Mentats. Oh man, I feel like loquacious. I don't even know what that means, man, but it's like my brain is just putting it all together faster than I can even process it. Actually, I don't think a boost in intelligence would be all that bad for him, but by the time you get to the very end, he's on his final chem, and that happens to be Psycho. Had to get Rufus to rebuild this terminal. I was on the psycho high and I was typing and I just, man, it was like I couldn't not be angry. Just started punching the keys, man. Punching them. Punching and punching, punching. I think maybe I should lie down. Number four, we have Rory Rigwell's terminal inside of the Irish Pride Industries shipyard. Every once in a while, you get that person who just wants to make peace with deadly animals. Uh, does the grizzly man, Timothy Treadwell, ring a bell? Actually, that, that has its own similarities to Rory Rigwell, but anyway. Uh, some animals are best left alone, or better yet, blown to pieces. Myrlurks would be perfect for that, but Rory thinks he can change them. With peace and love, he can make them friendly to other human beings. Um, now, at some point, he came across a group of hatchlings, and since then has been observing their development. This is where his notes start. It's amazing how far the colony has come since the first orphan hatchlings. I was so worried the Myrlurks wouldn't survive, but they've done the opposite. They've thrived. I like to think it's because of my positive energy and love. They're always so hungry, my little murkies. I have to remember to throw their food away from myself. They almost pinched me again the other day. They don't know what they're doing, the poor things. I've decided to keep my trunk of valuables in the Mirelurk nest under the ship for safekeeping, but I have to be more careful. Some bad people snuck in the other day, despite my warnings, and my murkies did something dreadful. I'm glad none of my pets got hurt, but it was frightening to see them kill so casually. Must work more on their training. Yeah, I didn't think they were cute as hatchlings, but yeah, by the time they grow to your size, you really can't hang around. I mean, they'll do anything- oh. Oh, sorry. Sorry, only positive messages for his Myrlurks. Number three, we have Brother Edmund's journals at the Jalbert Brothers' disposal. Uh, really, any notes from the children of Adam, they're, they're going to be strange. You know, the way they speak, their holy sermons, they can seem a bit off, a bit fanatical, especially in a place that seems to have largely lost faith. So when you do find these reverent recordings, it's certainly something different. Within this terminal ye shall find the word of the holy Atom, divined unto Brother Edmund, lowly scribe, and follower of Atom's shining way. May ye who read this find the illumination ye seek. Blessed be. Now, apparently a group of Atom worshippers came to this junkyard and thought, Ah, oh, perfect, this is the perfect spot for a shrine to Atom. Radioactive barrels all over the place. So immediately to work they began. However, other outsiders would soon make contact. A group of Philistines approached, bearing promises of glad tidings and touting their wares like whores. We saw past their charade. They claimed they wished to trade with us, when all they had to offer were lies and temptations. We stayed the course and bathed the unbelievers in glorious radiation. They are with Adam, now and forever. The shrine, oh, the shrine. We collect Adam's power and barrels and the machines that once propelled the old world's autos. We are meager workers, not artists, but our devotion can be seen in the shrine, a place for all believers to gather and pray is here at last. Glory be to Atom! Now, interestingly enough, there aren't any children of Atom in this area. They must have been scared off by all of the mole rats. You know, the ones infected with radiation. Brother Edmund, do not abandon your beautiful children! Number two, we have the terminals inside of Hubris Comics. You'll be surprised to hear this, but the acting industry is... Weird. 
yeah, it's ripe with drama and talking behind people's backs, from actors complaining about not getting their favorite part, to producers rushing to meet the deadline, to managers making sassy phone calls. It's a crazy world. And the entries at Huber's Comics, it's a perfect example of what it really is like. Regarding the Silver Shroud play that was being put on, members of the production were at odds as to who should play the Mistress of Mystery. I want to pull my hair out, Babowski is cast and signed a contract with Claire Riddell for the role of the Mistress of Mystery. I don't care how much the Tomb of Amon-Ra grossed, the Mistress of Mystery is a brunette. It's not blonde, brown, and definitely not a redhead. And have you heard Claire's voice? The Mistress of Mystery is confident, a match for the Shroud at his best day, not some half-starved waif that's known for her shrill screaming. Shannon Rivers has worked for us for decades. She is the voice of the Mistress of Mystery. End of story. She's even a natural brunette. She's not as young as Claire, but surely we can do something with lighting to help with that. If we don't fix this, I swear I'm walking. I won't have my name in the credits for this train wreck. Vivi, relax. If it's that important to you, maybe we can put Claire in a wig. But the contract is signed, so this is happening. What is it with you guys and Mrs. Rivers anyway? Yeah, maybe 20 years ago, but not now. She's got a face made for radio. Am I right? Claire's got star power, and that's what we need. Okay, I talked with Petey Boy, and he's agreed to a couple new scenes. We need romance. And Claire's got the goods. I tried stalling her, but things are spiraling over here. Her agent was having dinner with Maxwell over at the Derby. Not good. Claire's still on board. She loves the script. Oh, she especially loves the outfit. You got the shots of that, right? Yowza. So, I don't care what's going on over there. We need to sign her before we lose her to the Wisemans. Or someone else. Effective immediately, I quit. You can explain to Petey how you lost the lead writer for the Silver Shroud. And after everything Shannon has put up with, if you want to fire her, do it yourself. Manticore has been wanting to hire me for years. Looks like your loss is their gain. Yeah, and that's a little taste of Hollywood for you, uh, where I happen to be living right now. Thumbs up. And number one, we have Bosco's Terminal at the bottom of DB Technical High School. We're familiar with the King's descent into madness, right? Although here, it isn't familial bonds, which become severed and confused that cause it to happen. Here, the affliction is much more physical. Bosco, who is the leader of, of a lot of the raiders in much of downtown Boston, has a run-in with a dog. A carrier of rabies, perhaps? Maybe an enhanced version? Well, the results are not kind. Torx's goddamn mutt nearly took my arm off. We were cleaning up in Backstreet Apparel and the mongrel clamped onto my hand. Had to put a bullet in it just to get it to release. Can't have that kind of shit. Makes me look like I'm not in control. Torx ain't getting off as easy as his dog did. Uh, Torx's mutt, I think it was sick. Since the bite, I've been blacking out. Can't keep my temper. Temper. Temper in check! Fuck this old keyboard! Having some trouble keeping my temper in check. No one in the crew seems to suspect anything, but if this keeps getting worse, someone's gonna think they can do this job better. And they're trying to poison me. It's the water. It's all poison. Put down three more today. The assassins. They said I needed a break, that they're afraid I might be losing it. Might be. They want me dead, think I'm weak. They're wrong. Torx mutt, I can feel it crawling under my skin. It's tightening muscles, sharpening resolve. Now I'm not going anywhere. But I'm so thirsty. Need water, safe water. The, the basement, full of water. No one can reach it, no poison. But the rules need to be clear. Everyone has to know. I'm still in control. There's something else down here. A beast. Other gangs must have seen it. I see it hiding in the dark. Catch its one cold eye watching. It just stares, lying. Waiting. It's been killing my men while I sleep. Leaving me its trophies. W wake up to find myself covered in blood. I sent guards to capture it, but they failed. Claim there is no monster even while they hang from their chains. But it's down here. Then I'll kill every last one of them until they bring it to me. Good boys. They caught the beast. Brought me its head. But now the other gangs need to know who the real monsters are. Time for us to make a statement. Ah, oh, it's so great, that moment you realize Bosco is hunting his own men. And the sickness, it, it's so deep he doesn't even recognize when he's in that frenzy, tearing out their guts. Oh, it's crazy. 
and, and yet there's still a flicker of sanity somewhere in there that does allow him to still write all of this down. So it, it, it's cool. His condition is very odd indeed. And there you have it, five strange terminal entries in Fallout 4. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me, is there another one you would add to this list? All right, thank you very much for watching. I, I, I'll... Oh, hold on. Hello? What? They're changing the role of Deacon's son? Are you kidding me? I, I, I've, I've, I've been working months for this. No, call up Bethesda. No, call Call up at that. Okay, I'll I'll do. I'll speak to him. I'll speak to him. What? What? Harry Styles. His voice isn't low enough. No. Come on. Listen. It's got to be raspy. Come